Welcome to the last part in this unification series for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. And I have to admit, I'm pretty sad about the fact that this series is coming to an end. And a big apology for anyone who's very invested in this series and would like to see it go further. I personally would like to see it go a lot further, but um, events have now conspired to mean that I've got to rethink my schedule with respect to Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. And the victim, I'm afraid, is this series. And I suppose I better give an explanation to why that has actually happened. And the, probably the best place to start is the fact that when I started this series, and my original plan was always to keep play it until Workers and Resources Soviet Republic went into full release. And then I would start a project that I've been wanting to do for years, which is an early start um, on a custom map which I would then play for a long duration because we'd be on a stable release because the game would be in, in, in its final format. And that's what I was working to. And unfortunately, when I started this series, I made the assumption that 3 Division probably wouldn't do the full release until the end of summer. Unfortunately, they dropped a bombshell and so announced that the full release will be on the 20th of June 2024. And I'm recording this on the 13th of June. 2024 so we've only got a week to go before the game goes into full release and, um, and when that release date was announced I thought well I've been working hard on the custom map I want for my early start and the plan was that I would ca start the new series once the game went into full release and then I would do, do make this game into an irregular series probably once a week and take this series forward then I, I was checking in my comments one day and I got a number of requests from new players saying that they had problems with the game mechanics and were asking how, how can you climb that very steep learning curve that's now developed in this game. And what that resulted in me um, taking a look at the tutorials. And I think the problem with the tutorials, there are lots of them. But I can understand from the point of view of a new player, some of them are a little bit out of date now and some are just, they're very focused on a specific task. So the offshot of that was, is that I decided to do a, what we could call a, a guided series for new players, where the idea was, is that I would go, take new players through the thought process and try and explain the mechanics from the perspective of somebody playing their first game. And, and, I have to admit it, that series has become a little bit of a monster and, and my original plan was to do about five or six parts. I think I'm now up to about 12 parts, some of which haven't already been released. And I greatly underestimated the amount of time it would, it would take to actually make those videos because I've actually had to do research. In fact, uh, by doing that series, I've actually learned a couple of things about the game, which some of them which have been in the game for some time, but I, I suddenly realised I didn't fully understand how the mechanic worked. So that series has started to push this series out of the my mind frame. And then the final nail in the coffin for this series was 3 Division announcing the Biomes DLC. Now, when I first saw that and I watched the trailer, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed by that. I would like to do a series on one of these biomes, but I still want to stick with my early start. The mistake I made was, as I watched uh, an overview video, apologies, I can't remember who actually makes it. If I can, uh, if I remember, what I will do is add the link in the video description, because it's a very interesting overview. It's not very long, where they, where they actually go through all the different biomes. And for anyone who's not familiar with that DLC, it's basically the DLC adds three new biomes, Arctic, Desert, and Jungle. And I'll be completely upfront, Desert and Jungle, I listened to the review and I thought, yeah, that's okay. And the one that's really grabbed me is the Arctic Biome, simply because what that does is the your actual growing season is shortened considerably. I think it's to represent what it what, what summer would be like in the um, in the Arctic. I think it reduces down to somewhere like the end of May to the um, end of September, I think. And also... When when I when I was watching the review, they he, they actually showed the winter temperatures would go down to about minus fifty degrees Celsius, and they was also met talking about that these temperatures would have a quite a big impact on the way the heating works, and that really grabbed me. And as soon as I finished the video, I started thinking, well, is there any way I can do a, an early start 
on my custom map and then integrate the biome that biome into that custom map now at this point in time i've got absolutely no idea of whether that is possible because i don't because the biome dlc hasn't been released yet at the moment all my, what i want to do post release is completely been shredded and it, and i've been kind of thinking very hard about what i would want to do so i've come down to two options one is that i can manage to get my custom map fixed so that i can play it with the arctic biome and the other one is that if I can't do that, we're going to play on the Arctic biome with probably what will be a pre predefined map that would be available as part of the DLC. Now, all that turmoil means that I, I really need to sort a few things out in, in the upcoming week. And as I say, that was the final death now for this series. So that's the explanation of, of what is going on and why this series is coming to an end. Um, what I will value, guys, as usual, is if you've got any comments or opinions on what I've been talking about, especially with the series going forward, feel free to chuck it in the comments. And what we're going to be doing in this part is rather than actually do any new gameplay, because that's a bit pointless, I, what I want to do is have a little bit of a review of what I would still call my successes and failures with this map because there are quite a few um, well there's a few successes but there's quite a lot of failures I've also got a little bit of a mystery over here I don't know if you and we, I've, what I've got is this block on the end here which has got a happiness of 48% but I can't work out why they're unhappy because if I mean if you look at all their requirements are fulfilled the crime rates low um, but they're all down about 36% um, and I just can't work out why these why these aren't, aren't, aren't happy to be honest the only thing I can think of is that I mean they haven't even got unemployment I mean they've got high lo high loyalty um, and I've been kind of monitoring this block for some time but they don't actually see in fact I've even been tracking the individuals in this and you can see, I, I'm not seeing why. The, I mean, the only thing is they got short lifespan, and the only real problem is health. So what I did then was, maybe I thought, well, maybe because they've got low health, that's what's making them unhappy. So I kind of built this pollution meter. And if I come in here, what I, the one thing I have found actually is something again, something I never really fully realised. I did encounter it on my previous five point series, but. I didn't really take it into consideration but this sewage outfall because it's not no water treatment there's the pollution is really bad but there's no really bad pollution here we've got a hospital right on their doorstep which is providing cover yet for some reason and if I go to the block next door you can see that these people have got a happiness of 79 percent uh, and I mean they've got access to a university and, and I say this is a little bit of a mystery. I mean, I mean the only thing I can think of is that there that this block is literally full of highly educated people. Therefore, they're, they're not satisfied with their conditions simply based on the fact that they they're expecting more because they're highly educated. Maybe maybe it's the fact that they don't have access to uh, what you'd call highly qualified jobs. But it's something that I've never ever encountered before, you know. And if I put the overlay map on, and if we come to, I put happiness on. It's just this one corner. I mean, I mean, we've got seventy-three percent happiness here, but I mean, it's it's still within the average. But we just got this one block on the end here. I mean, it is. It does seem to be slowly climbing up a bit. It's now 58%. But you can see, and again, this is something, another contradiction. This is why I'm starting to wonder maybe, maybe it's a bit of a bug. Because the overlay map says that the happiness is 58%, but the actual building itself says it's 49%. Um, so there is a difference in the happiness from that point of view. And if you actually look at this one, these people are complaining that they don't have access to culture and sport, but they've got a higher one than this one, and these people here. So I, I, the only thing I can think of is that it is the fact that the vast majority of people in here are highly educated, which is strange because if you move to the next one here, 
Um, no, even these people are highly educated. Average age 37. Let's see what the average age... I just wonder whether it's the fact that it was a surge of over 21s in here because they're all quite young in this area. Anyway, guys, that is a mystery, which if, if any of you have encountered that and actually know the solution, feel free to check it in the comments. So let's just get down to the failures. And I'm going to start at a very general level. And I think part of my biggest mistake was, and I make it every series, and I know you guys put it in the comments and remind me over and over again, is I don't put enough emphasis on getting the railway running. And that's something I've actually learned more by doing the guided series because I put I had to do a specific video on railways and the difference between diesel and electric that's something else I've learned that's one of the things I did learn and I'll just talk about that in a minute but I think my biggest mistake was being too slow with getting the railway up and running and the next kind of biggest mistake was and I wish I'd really known this when I was planning this city was the fact that I didn't push the research to get these pipelines here to bring in oil and export bitumen from the oil refinery here. And I think this is a very good tip that if you're in an area where there isn't much in the way of oil, like I've created here, I think going in there and importing the oil by pipeline rather than trying to use trucks to run the oil refinery will actually produce a return, especially if you can push back the bitumen to offset your import costs. And, and of course, the fact that we brought oil in here also meant that the oil could then be fed into the chemical plant and other buildings down here, uh, which I think makes a very, very big difference. And I'll be honest, going forward now, this will be something that's going to be on the, the top of my thought process is, you know, using these um, pipeline border connections to come across. Because uh, what it means is that you can now plan to have a, an oil in a kind of import that could actually drive the overall process. Now back to railways and what I did learn, and this is something because again, if any of you follow my, my series, you'll be aware that I tend to go straight for um, electricity and I very, very rarely have ever used diesel. But while I was um, doing the research for that, the, the guided video, I was fiddling around with the, uh, what we call it, the distribution offices, which I think we got one here. That's no, a train depot. The distribution office is here. And what I actually just found was that the distribution offices obviously have fuel. The, my main prejudice around against diesel, um, using diesel, is having to build these slightly annoying um, refueling stations. But when I was doing the experimentation for the rail distribution office, and what I actually discovered from that experimentation was is that if you, run, if you use diesel trains to, uh, in a distributed system, you don't need to build these things. All you've got to do is, is just make sure that you've got plenty of fuel in your distribution office. Because then what happens is the diesel trains always go back to the distribution office to refuel. And because when you build a distribution office, you need to have this bilateral direction, what you end up with is a very safe place for the trains to refuel, where there's no risk of them at all actually obstructing the traffic flow on your main network. So that is something that um, I've really taken to heart and I really do want to think about it. Now, I've just had a message coming up telling me that I've got unemployment too hard. Oh, that's because these guys have just moved in. Wow, I must have a lot of over 21s. It's going to speed the game here. Yeah, that's just a, uh, a by the by message. So returning back to what I was just talking about, um, that doesn't mean I would ever go exclusively diesel, but... And what has suddenly occurred to me is that you could build electrified lines for routes where there's a lot of traffic and maybe that you're going to be moving passengers. So, for example, you could say you wanted a, a passenger network to deliver workers. What you could do then, uh, and so what you could do is you electrify that so that the, the trains never have to worry about going to a refueling station and then use diesel trains working out at the distribution office. Now, as part of that video also, I actually went into metros. And again, it's something that I tend not to even think about in, as in the early part of the series. But one of the interesting things I discovered about the metro systems is that if I, you can build one, that doesn't mean, uh, or you can plan one and then build it later on. 
And it's also interesting the fact that met metros and SUs mods don't come available until about 1968. So another kind of strategy that I'm considering is that once I when I'm playing a series and I get to a major town, I could then consider building a metro because looking at this, say for example, this town. I've got a problem with getting the workforce out to here, which is one another one of my big mistakes. And it occurred to me that if I built a planned metro line, I could then have a long-term solution to really drive this industry hard. And a possible alternative of that, and this is what I'd say is another one of my biggest mistakes, was the fact that I should have really considered the option of a cable car to bring the workers over here into here. Because although the, the bus system is working, especially now that I've got some higher capacity buses, I still can't really get a maximum workforce into this concentration of um, industries here. So that is a bit of a failure. Now, just to get a bit, try and get a bit more positive. Successes, I think the farming after a little bit of a dodgy start has started to really turn over quite well now, even though I still haven't got a complete control on the actual um the statistics coming from here i feel that getting on top of the um fertilizer issue can really fix the your farming and again just to, if we go to the overlay message you can see that i'm now and we're on the 3rd of april and at the moment we're still maintaining 150 percent fertility in all these fields and i think we've got i've got a similar profile down here because one thing I have noticed is that you seem to get to 150 and then what happens is, is once the fields have been sown, what happens is the chemicals go out and then lift it even higher. And I think what happens is that every harvest, your fields lose roughly 50% fertility. So if you can keep the, your fertility at 150% when the sowing season starts, then you can add the chemicals on top, which will then make quite a big difference. Now, the, the, the one tip I will say about that is that the fertilizers and fuel, liquid fuel need to be in here in large quantities to drive that um, process. So I would probably recommend building a small tank alongside to, so that what a, a farm, especially a really large farm like this down here, apologies for flipping all over the map, but I'm trying to get things going especially a large farm like this which has got i mean it's got an internal storage of 110 tons but i think a large farm with a lot of fields would certainly benefit from a another store a 300 ton store attached to it because what that means is that when the the tractors go out and start fertilizing the fields they don't have to stop waiting for more deliveries and of course the way the fertilizer works it, it's kind of batch process so it's not like a continuous process so what you need is a big store so that when the tractors decide that they need to put chemicals on the field they can do it all in one run and i think that also applies to the fertilizer that it pays to kind of build up a little bit of an intervention store attached to the factory uh, the farm as well so that is another success um uh <laughs> trying to think of what successes and failures i think my i do like the highway i'm quite proud of this highway system and i think i'm going to be including more of this in future series especially junctions like this i think you do get a better flow of traffic because this highway system especially um, um especially with the highway because because there's no nodes the especially if you get vehicles like this which has got a top speed of 75 kilometers now it's maintaining that 75 kilometers an hour all the way along the here. You know, so it's really making rapid progress where if you come to here, that's the other thing I've also done is started using waypoints to push um, bus routes like that one actually onto the highway, where if you've got vehicles moving along through here, all the different nodes are constantly slowing up the traffic another problem that i had was water um and it's still not 100 percent. again i think the mistake i made was by actually connecting the domestic supply with industrial supply i think truthfully in a more efficient system you need to keep these two separate you need to supply the water to your industrial area and keep that separate from your domestic area 
So that's something else that probably needs to be dealt with. Um, let's get rid of that for the moment. Um, I must admit, I do like the city that's illuminated at night. I'm becoming a complete convert to the day-night cycle now. Although I'd like to make it look a little bit, a little bit more aesthetic over time. Let's come back to this tower block and see. See, it's still stuck at 58. It says 58%. Um, 61. I suppose people are kind of um, building up. What's the happiness in here? See, this one came... This, these people have got problems and they're still 83% happiness. But... Uh, but the majority of the population is basic education. I'm, I'm starting to think that maybe it is the fact that the vast majority of the people in here are highly educated. Uh, I've, I've actually... Because, uh, of course, the way that you could make them happier would be a TV station or giving them personal cars. That Because personal cars, um, well, personal cars mainly push up loyalty, but they also improve happiness. Uh, I mean, they've got access to a pub. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a mystery, guys. Um, anyway, there's nothing I can do about it in this series now. Maybe if I built a TV station, it might make them a little bit happier. And make them I think this area worked very well, having the power station, but that was down to the happy coincidence of having coal close to gravel and this is one element of the game is that sometimes if you get a good break with the resources you can make something work quite well i think this is now getting to the peak of my plan for um, my construction industry is getting everything tied into here i think this does work quite well especially these buildings up here um which are and i think these this is going to be my preferred option from quarrying going forward is the two excavators working in one rather than lots of small ones especially because i think what makes the really great difference is having this conveyor belt connection so it's then because not in the past what i've had is kind of loads and loads of trucks running around up here consuming fuel just traveling a very short distance and of course what that means it leaves you with is the maintenance problem which of course and that this actually solves because the only maintenance vehicles that need maintenance are the two excavators rather than a, a fleet of trucks. Um, actually, what's the waste going in here? Yeah, construction waste. So that is working well. Uh, of course, we've got our steel industry that we're not going to build now, but I think that would work. Would have worked quite well as well. And of course, what we've got here um, is vehicles coming in and out of here but we don't I haven't actually set up the supplies to this at the moment there's no workers so <laughs> oh well that's the way it goes um let's come back to here again 61 percent and we did get a pollution warning i just want to see what the pollution is like now see the we've got a major pollution source here it's really amazing how much how well much that actually spreads and i do think it's the fact that this game's got a kind of equivalent of a hidden water pollution here but i mean that comes out virtually all the way to this here let me just measure that this could be a bit of useful information that i might need so you're talking 500 meters so Having a an untreated sewage sewage outfall within 500 meters of your residential area could have a massive impact on uh, your their health and of course when the health generates its happiness. So maybe I need to think about a bit more about water treatment. Let me just see. Um, I don't think waste treatment, uh, water treatment. No, it's not that, is it? It's I do uh, sewage treatment. But, I mean, there aren't many options. I just want to look at the, some of the mod. Actually, just look at the um, sewage treatment is chemicals. Chemicals is a really big factor. Uh, this only processes treats 160 uh, 80 cubic meters of water. So, for a major town, you you talk about a big one, which is 0.6 tons of chemicals for 220 cubic meters of water 
Uh, hmm. So that would be quite a major overhead with respect to yeah, this is max data water consumption 0.4 cubic meters per day. Does that mean it actually because it doesn't? Does it? I mean, I don't think it actually needs water. I think that's just the. I think that's just what the, the people would do. Power consumption station. And the thing that always confuses me with this these sewage treatment plants is the fact that it says that there's 440 cubic meters of water produced, which is more than what it's actually meant to come in. But if you actually look at this, um, you don't get a fresh water output. You get a foul water output, which means you, you're theoretically getting fresh water out of it, but you can't process it. Now, if we look at the mods, let's have a quick look at mods. Again, this one's got there. There is a mod that actually converts. So this one does 10 cubic meters of water. It's a little bit tiny. Uh, what's that? A wastewater clarifier. That, that needs chemicals. And it turns 110 cubic meters of water into 220. We've got a sewage treatment plant here, which is just the same, but it's a lot smaller. And then, of course, what we got here is the crops process. These are very tricky to manage because they, they, they feed in 10 cubic meters. Yes, you get crops, but they can, back, they can cause backups if you're not careful. That's chemicals. That's chemicals. That's chemicals. Um, this looks like it's an aerobic treatment plant. And again, for this odd reason that it says maximum amount of toxic liquids to be eliminated, 30 cubic meters. But it says maximum production per workday is 300 cubic meters of water, which just seems very much over the top. Anaerobic wastewater treatment. This takes through. See, this one's properly balanced. It takes 330 cubic meters of water and produces 330 cubic meters of water. So. But this is a really big plant. It represents a major investment there. And then we got this one here again, chemicals. So we've only really got one plant or a very small collection of plants that don't require chemicals. Anyway, I've got completely digressed on that. Apologies, guys. Um, uh, I think it might be pay, pay just to put these things a long way away or something like that. Or maybe maybe put some way that you can actually integrate a waste treatment plant into your network. Uh, probably the my biggest disappointment is that I haven't been able to complete this tourist town. I was really looking forward to getting this up and running and kind of having it function as a tourist town, but that would involve building the railway. And, and I th um, I'm actually starting to get a little bit sentimental now. This, uh, this is probably one of my best, biggest successes is having this um, center here with the vehicle repair bay in the center with the maintenance construction office next to it to maintain the buildings. And then an array of distribution offices here and uh, technical office that side. And we got our well, two technical offices there. And I think, and also uh, I think the depot tucked on here. I think having all these vehicles round this large vehicle repair station, you can see the connections there, that really cuts through and takes the pressure off from the point of view of maintaining all your vehicles. I mean, I haven't had any real problems with vehicle maintenance at all in this series. And if we turn that on, I'll just show it to you. Uh, whole map. You've got one excavator now. I can always tell you where that excavator is. It's up here. Because it's just off the edge of the map. Um, on the extreme of the vehicle maintenance. That's the reason why I built that one here. And if this was ever given any... Um, if this was given any um, things... I think this... Um, Okay, let me just see if I can uh, been this actually out of range of the yeah, I think it's not in walking range. 
well it is but it's not functional um let me just do something if i come into here and we set that to 50 percent what will happen is that the necessary resources will be delivered to here and then once the resources are delivered to here we should be able to get a there's no workforce there yeah we'd have to put in a small minibus or something which we could do i think i've got a minibus here um yeah that's a car sorry i'm just gonna buy a small uh, uh we don't need a lot of minibuses let me just see short bike uh, speed bus okay let's get a couple of those just wait for them to come in um we should have a lot more people waiting here now because we've got this block here that people yeah, this is 44 people out of jobs so and that will get that should get more that's getting more workers into our chemical plant in fact it's nearly up to maximum and i was building this one so we're getting ahead with the chemicals now we've probably got some unemployment here so we're just pop you there load workers drop off there and then back into there for the fuel and then we'll come here and then eventually what we'll do is get here you actually open. you can see now the fact that this is getting resources and it's now got an assigned workforce yeah no these buses are still <laughs> kind of running i think that what they're trying to do is get repaired because they're mobile buses and we've got a workforce in here but we still don't have all the resources we need yes we have so we're now starting to repair these vehicles here and what i should do is if i extend the working range to this now and we come out here oh we need a couple of uh um buy a couple of those as well and what that will do then is that provides a solid cover over to this area here and this is something you do need to remember is that um any vehicle will need to be repaired um so it's important that they get out here yep and that repairs have been done once the covered holes arrive um this is looks like one so uh, this guy's just delivering the electro components um we'll wait what i'm gonna do is just wait for the the uh covered hole to turn up i think this is the one could be the one that's coming into the stuff you can see they're actually using the highway Um, yeah so if we kind of get a track on him oh he's going for fuel <laughs> yeah I should really put fuel into here as well that's probably another key thing with repair stations is making sure they got a supply of fuel otherwise your vehicles go wandering off all across the map and then we'll just see what whether this guy will go out and repair that excavator right he's picking up this generic service materials here and if you watch him it looks like he needs 8.5 tons of service materials so th these won't go out until they've got there and that kind of service materials thing is a, a generic um thing to actually repair the other vehicle I don't think you can break that down actually it doesn't tell you and then what you should do is go out 
and uh, repair the excavator before it actually breaks down completely. You can see here it is, it comes up to here and he will park there. Now the truck will just park here. The actual repair uh, shows up in here, I think. Yeah. And this is this is one thing that used to confuse me a little bit. The fact the it's shown that the excavator is being repaired and it gives the impression that the excavator is in this building, but it's not. It's actually being repaired remotely, but the actual repairs are always shown in here. And because of what we got in here at the moment is we've got the excavator being repaired remotely and the bus alongside it that's being repaired as well. Anyway, that's a lot. Apologies for the long digression. I think the last thing I want to do is just gain the whole map. It's interesting that the site towers haven't collapsed, I don't think. Um, just check. Um, they look terrible, but. And we got the Red Star Monument, checkpoint gates, all the ones of these ones in red for maybe that electro sub substation but that's only at 50 percent where are you yeah you're in this area here so this substation is going to need uh, now so there's reconstruction in progress but nothing's actually turned up yet i'm a bit worried why he's not has he been picked up by our repair station I do wonder sometimes whether yep it's been repaired which is here and no workers okay so what what this is waiting for at the moment is good old steel and electro components yeah But the construction office isn't reporting anything there. It's just waiting for, of course, we got our obligatory queue here. So that will get that will get repaired over time. So I think this is where I'm going to leave it. Hope you enjoyed the video and the series. Any comments on this series, feel free to check in the video description. If uh, you've got any opinions on what I talked about, what's upcoming, uh, during the next week, I will be focusing very much on the guided series to try and get as much of that done and also trying to get some prep work done for the new series. And when the new series will start will depend very much on um, wh what I can do about the map. And uh, what I might do is if things get a bit dire, I might actually put up a poll ask, asking the question about whether you want to start straight away on a on the standard map will wait a few weeks while I sort out the custom map. But that will depend very much on uh, what I find out once the game is released. And in fact, one thing I will be doing when the game is released, I'm just going to do a short video to compare the game as it is now, just to any other new features that have been added, which I know for a fact they already have. Final decision would depend on what I actually find when I get a chance to load the DLC and look at the uh, map editor and find out how the biomes can be set. But this is where I'm going to leave it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting. And until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.